Hair Cycles tutorial video number one. If you want to use the question on the screen and have a go at constructing your own hair cycle and answering the question, pause the video, have a go at it, and then afterwards you can come and have a look at the worked example that I'm about to do. Right, before we start any hair cycle calculation, we first of all need to go straight to the data that we're given and write some equations for these data, okay? So, first equation we're given, or first value we're given, is the enthalpy of combustion of propanoic acid, C3H6O2. Definition of enthalpy of combustion is the enthalpy change when one mole of a compound is combusted in oxygen, and the combustion of a hydrocarbon is going to produce carbon dioxide and water vapour. I am leaving state symbols out of this at the moment for convenience. Right. In order to balance this equation, we'll need three and a half O2 molecules. We're next given to enthalpy change of formation pieces of data. Um, the enthalpy change of formation of carbon dioxide and of water. The definition of enthalpy change of formation is the enthalpy change when one mole of a compound is completely formed from its elements in their standard states. So carbon dioxide would be formed from carbon and one diatomic oxygen mole and water vapour would be produced from one mole of diatomic oxygen, sorry, one mole of diatomic hydrogen and half a mole of diatomic oxygen. Having done this, we can now look back at the question to find out what we're actually trying to find. And in this case, we're trying to find the enthalpy change of formation of propanoic acid. This is going to be the last equation I write because it's going to be the first equation or the top equation in our Hess cycle triangle. So, enthalpy change of formation of propanoic acid would involve three carbon atoms, or three carbon moles, reacting with three diatomic hydrogen moles and a diatomic oxygen. The reason we're going to use a Hess cycle to calculate this is they are uh, enthalpy changes of formation are theoretical values. It's not experimentally possible to carry out this reaction. Therefore, we need to calculate it from Hess cycles. So let's have a look now at combining the equation we've just written, which is the one that we're trying to find out, which is the enthalpy change of formation, with the data that we actually have, or the equations that we ha actually have, which are these three equations here. If we look at our equation here and our first equation, we should hopefully be able to identify that C3H6O2, the propanoic acid, is present in the reactants in our enthalpy change of combustion. So we can now write this equation here and draw an arrow to make three CO2 molecules and three H2O molecules. Having dealt with that equation, we now need to have a look at this one and this one and see where they're going to fit into our Hess cycle. Well, carbon and oxygen is replicated here and that arrow could represent the enthalpy change of formation of carbon dioxide. Obviously, the only difference is, is this is three times the enthalpy change of formation value. Similarly, the hydrogen and oxygen reacting to make water vapour. The final thing we're going to need to do is go back to this equation because obviously it doesn't look like it balances it at the moment. And we'll find that we actually need four and a half O2 molecules to balance that equation. Having constructed the equation, we can now slot the data into it. So, the easy one is the enthalpy change of combustion of propanoic acid, which is a value of minus 1527 kilojoules per mole. And then the other one, the enthalpy change of formation of carbon dioxide and water. The difference being that this has a numerical value of minus 394, but it is for the that is for the formation of one mole of carbon dioxide as three are being formed here, we're going to need three times that. And then obviously for the enthalpy change of formation of water, which is here, we'll need three times that as well.
because we're forming three water molecules. I've already done the calculation for this part of the reaction, which comes out as minus 2,040 kilojoules per mole. For simplicity, I'm going to label each of the arrows as A, B and C. Hess's law states that the total enthalpy change is independent of the direction taken. That basically means that the total enthalpy values for all of the arrows in the clockwise direction, which in this case are B plus C, equals the enthalpy values for that in the anti-clockwise direction. We are trying to find B, so if we just re rearrange this, A minus C will allow us to find B, and then all we've got to do is to put the numerical values back into the equation, which is minus 2040 minus minus 1527, which obviously becomes minus 2040 plus 1527, which gives us a total enthalpy change of 513 kilojoules per mole. That's the end of the tutorial.